Okay, let's jump right into it. Linda Fig, read this part here. Pause it by pressing the space button so you can read it clearly. Linda Fig, she will lead all the aesthetic design and work closely with the owner, which is FIU. So exactly here, she's gonna lead it all. But wait till you see the rest of this video, and especially the uh, clip I found from 2008. You guys are gonna be like, oh yeah. Now we're gonna jump over to the player board. The player board's right here, we have FIU. We have, and you can see the system here. See to the far left, we have Linda Fig. She's running it, she's the design and also the executive member. Um, you guys again, pause this to see it. But you can see that FIU, Linda Fig, is part of the design and the executor, executive uh, committee. So apparently, Linda Fig is 100% Liable also. She's got some her hand on this. As a visual quality designer and sustainable manager, Figs, Linda Fig, will personally lead the bridge aesthetics design and sustainability for the project. Linda's passion is bridge aesthetics and sustainability. She is an international speaker on creating on uh, creating bridges bridges as art. What is your trademark? and has a passion for creating functional bridge sculptures. She worked closely with the FIU, the design team, shareholders and agencies to ensure that the every detail and thoughtful is thoughtfully, carefully and fully addressed. The cornerstone of her bridge designs are that they are, are that every detail matters. Yeah, sure thing. Sure thing. So all everybody who says it's a woman's bridge now, this locks that in, doesn't it? Allow me to go ahead and Surprise you guys with a little something. Uh, of course, everyone's seen all the tons of comments and about feminist this, feminist that with the bridge. And I've deleted tons of them. But let me go ahead, and, because now I've pretty much come to the end of the rainbow here. So I can, I've got a nice summation for you guys. And it is Linda Fig who did uh, participate strongly in, in this design along with FIU. With that said, let's hit on the feminist thing that uh, people ask about. And, well, you know, is feminism okay, etc.? Well, you've you got to, you know, if you're promoting just based on sex, then it's not okay. And that's what feminism uh, is about, mostly. If you look at this hundred, and don't want to trigger any guys, but go for them, go with me here for a minute. Especially my 10% of the women here, I don't want to offend any of you either. Um, unless you're a feminist, we can have a little fun with that, but I'm not a feminist man. I've dated a couple of feminists there. All turned out to be something wrong with them. Um, okay, so, hmm, 100 Women Strong. What is this group? I'm, I'm loading this up for you guys. The mission statement of 100 Women Strong is to inspire the women of Central Florida. So it's specific, women, Central Florida. And also um, to be strategic. And a woman, they show children here, right? But it's a little girl. And you look here, all girls. This is inspiring girls. This is not inspiring boys. All right, so this may say children, but clearly the message is saying girls and all feminine. So we go from that. Let me jump over. And I'm going to give you real data in a minute, but let's just jump over to here for a minute. Auburn University. If we look here, class of 81, Linda Fig. In 1981, she received a civil engineering graduate. Uh, she's a civil engineering graduate who has spent a career building uh, bridges around the world. Etc. Etc. She's a graduate. As president and CEO of FIG, is ultimately responsible for bridges in 42 states. Blah blah blah. Um, Linda FIG. I can't find where she ever got a, a, her PE. I, well, I guess it didn't look strong enough. But it appears that perhaps she's not. Um, she never took the test. She is, as you'll see later in this video, very strongly about design, design, design. In fact, uh, one of her books, she talks about how she. You know, rather sew clothing uh, when she was a child than, than purchase clothing. Okay, that's not really engineering drive, you know. It's, it's not the same. It's still, you know, you call it what you want to call it. That's more the feminine drive. With that said, I did learn how to sew as a child. So I can sew. All right. After taking a, probably can't sew a dress, right? Wouldn't even look that good in a dress. Well, we don't know, do we? After taking over uh, uh, from her father in 2002, blah, blah, blah. We can go on. You guys can read it. Just so you know, this is a video, even though you're watching it and I'm stopping, to help you out, hit the space bar. This will pause the, the video's um, 
movement and it would help you read these characters sh more sharply. That's of any video you, uh, you look at. Okay, during your tenure at Fig, Fig has won more than 300. This is her, you know, okay, great. But here we have down here, in addition to her service as the, as the Auburn Alumni Engineering Council, Fig, as the, that's Linda Fig, is a member of 100 plus women strong and a life member of the Auburn Alumni Association. She received the Engineering Achievement Award from Auburn, Auburn University in 2006 and was Outstanding Civil Engineering Alumni, Alumnus 2010. Sorry, I'm about choking here. All right, so there she is. So there you guys have that. Okay, let's jump into this video here. Give me a minute to key up a couple of things for you. So this is going to have Linda Fig in it. It's Bridges to the Future Part 3, 2008. And let's see if I can jump to 928. Let's see what we've got here first. 928. It's going to be Linda Fig talking about the structures need to last. They need to have redundancy, um, which is a slap in the face, right? Here we go. Oh, I'm going to have to change my uh, mic on this, I think. I don't think it's going to play where we can hear it. And I might lose the uh, audio. ...side of things. They tie together. Well, Linda, you, you, you uh, design bridges basically for a living. Yes. I think actually, that's a good question. What, what, what do you think the bridge of 2028 will look like? Well, it will be an extension of what is going on right now, but we will be looking at uh, more improved materials. You know, we're being able to get better technology with materials, higher strength concretes, higher strength steels, uh, fiber reinforced polymers. Um, we'll be able to have more corrosion resistance in our materials, which is going to give us uh, structures that will last much longer than they have in the past. I mean, we're looking at well beyond 150 years with the technology that's out there now. Uh, and this is, this is great because the investment uh, in our infrastructure is, is a high dollar item. And we need our infrastructure to last longer. And so here we go. She makes two-day-old bridges, and she's talking about making a 150-year-old bridge. Now let me jump up here to uh, 1540. And um, redundancy, I think this is it. Yeah, you're going to be slapping the face on redundancy. For the DAX on hundreds to thousands of bridges that were on their route so that they could do better planning. Yeah, and, and with, um, with these bridge decks, I mean, traditionally it's been a, a reinforced concrete deck, and, and yet we have technology today where we can use transverse and longitudinal post tensioning to really... Amazing, right? She talks about the transverse and post longitudinal tensioning. And she's going to talk about redundancy. I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Well, give me a minute. Sorry about the uh, change of volume, too. I'm now speaking to my laptop, not the, uh, not the uh, things P2015 purchased. <laughs> She's going to be talking about some products that they're actually putting in bridges at the time she's mentioning this to test, if you will, for redundancy, meaning that she's going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, an alternate cabling system that's tied in as the redundancy system of the bridge. And ultimately, listen, listen to this. If it's redundant, that means it's, it's secondary, right? It's not primary. If it's primary, it's no longer redundant. All right, so it's, it's part of the structure at that point. So you can't use one cable and upsize it that, that's that's not good thinking you want to use you know two cables you know and each one is that's redundancy the same cable means if the one cable fails so what you upsize it you've got the redundancy failing at the same time as the as the primary source of uh of support that's my best um redundancy system i can think of for you guys you can't have in place of a two by four you can't say i'm gonna use a four by four you follow what i mean you need Two two by four side by side gives you redundancy. Okay, one treated, one non treated, something like that. Now let's back this up and follow what she says, please. Yeah, and, and with um with these bridge decks, I mean traditionally it's been a, a reinforced concrete deck and and yet we have technology today where we can use transverse and longitudinal post tensioning to really gain extra strength in our in our concrete and compression so that we can minimize that salt intrusion or the chlorides and, and give our decks a lot longer life. I get So there we go. So you hear her talking about that. Now we're going to jump to 1720, where you hear about the experimental, if you will, products that she considers redundancy. We Sorry. must have redundancy. So having more redundancy by testing these new materials in with a system that's already designed to uh, be 
uh, self-sufficient with materials we know of, especially Again. the rural bridges, the smaller bridges, you know, the, that, that, that they much. might not have as much traffic as, as maybe the I-35 West did. Well, I, I think one way is to have uh, these materials work in concert with other materials that we're very familiar with. I mean, one of the big components of bridges today is we must have redundancy. So having more redundancy by testing these new materials in with a system that, I mean, one of the big components of bridges today is we must have redundancy. So yeah. having more redundancy by, I mean, one of the big components of bridges today is we must have redundancy. So how I did that so somebody can snatch it up for a gift. I know uh, people, you guys love gifts, so there's the piece of gift for you. Having more redundancy by testing these new materials in with a system that's already designed to uh, be uh, self-sufficient with materials we know already helps us to be able to study those. Um, for instance, uh, there's a cable stay bridge in Maine um, where we put uh, in the cables, uh, the cables themselves, now she's going to talk about how they made a test sample in the public. She's literally saying this in 2008. Listen to how she, she played. They're playing around with the redundancy using publics in the bridge in Maine. Listen, I just, I'm just, I'm just blown away by this statement. Selves have a few extra strands in the cables that we aren't really using for capacity. But instead of using steel, we've replaced those extra strands with fiber reinforced polymer. So we have a real test case where we have this new material in operation in a bridge where now we can look over the long term to see how this operates. And yet we're not really using it for strength, but we are using it to be able to see how this will work. So then maybe the next time we can use a little bit more of it. And this will help it get it into our marketplace much faster. I'm going to stop there, guys. And i, I got to raise my voice because I'm talking to the computer now. I mean, can you see the intent of the person back in 2008, what they were about? That shows what the what this person was do, was really all about. And that's in a live bridge that she said, an actual bridge that they're doing, a, the redundancy part is a test sample of a product. Instead of just testing it in a test lab, you know, however you're going to do it, test it somewhere else. But they're going to use the general public for the test. So it makes you wonder, right? Hey, keep going. Keep going with this bridge, you know? It's good enough. It's our test bridge. This is the makings right there. I got to end this because that was really a trigger for me to listen to. A few